the greatest sign of love the greatest sign of love and sign of love and i'm in the book of john tonight john chapter 15 and i'm going to read two verses from john 15 i'm reading chapter verse 12 and verse 13 john 15 12 through 13 and it reads this is my commandment that you love one another as i have loved you greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends this is my commandment that you love one another as i have loved you greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends so that's john 15 12 to 13. I really love the 15th chapter of John. I was reading and meditating on it today and a couple of verses jumped out at me in ways that I hadn't seen before. Jesus really takes the time in this chapter, people of God, to talk about love and friendship in no uncertain terms. The first thing he says in verse 12 is that I want you to love others the way I have loved you. That was his instruction love others the way that I have loved you. And then he went on to rank or to classify love. He said, there's great love and there's greater love. He said, there is no greater love than laying down your life for your friends. So if he's saying that there is no greater love, that means there's a great love, right? There's great and there's greater. And he says, there's no greater love than laying down your life for your friends. And when we hear the, the, the phrase laying down your life, we think we have to physically or literally die you know but Jesus never asked us to physically or literally die for each other you know he is the only sacrificial lamb and he died for us once and for all but what lay down your life means is to die to your own self to die to your own flesh to die to your own desires your own opinions your own way your own will hear me tonight people of God the greatest sign of love is death I don't want you to miss this tonight. Greater love hath no man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends, to deny himself, to die to his own flesh, to die to his own opinion. So the greatest sign of love is death. How much have you died in your relationships? How much have you been willing to give up or to lose for the sake of greater love? This isn't saying that you should lose your identity or your sense of self, you know, become a robot or a zombie or a slave. But this is saying die to your own flesh. And I ask my clients this all the time when, you know, when I do couples therapy or when they come to me with issues involving relationship stuff, I'll often ask them, would you rather be right or be in right relationship? Because a lot of us are so determined to be right all the time that we are losing the relationship in the process. So would you rather be right or be in right relationship? Come on tonight. And so sometimes in order for us to walk in greater love, we have to give up our right to be right. That is what laying down our lives means. That is what dying to self means. That you, could, you give up your right to be right. As Christians, we know that persecutions are going to come. The Bible says anyone who lives godly in Christ will suffer persecution. And sometimes persecution comes through people lying on us. Sometimes it comes on people treating us unfairly, taking advantage of us, all of these different things. Now, we don't necessarily, quote unquote, deserve that, but we have surrendered our rights to God. So when they lie on us and when they, they cheat us and all of these things, we don't respond to them in the way that the world would respond because we realize that persecution is going to come so we so we have surrendered our right to be right so sometimes in order to walk in greater love you have to give up your right to be right are you walking in great love or are you walking in greater love in your relationships jesus distinguished between the two then he said listen to this next characteristic of friendship and love that he highlighted in john 15 in verse 15 of john 15 he says no longer do i call you servants for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. So he distinguishes between a servant and a friend through the level of access that they have to the information that he has. So Jesus said, I consider you my friends. Why? Because everything my father told me, I shared with you. Servants don't get trusted with secrets or personal information, but friends do. And that's a characteristic of friendship and of love 
that Christ is even teaching us through that verse. Friends share personal things with each other. And I know I'm stepping on some toes tonight because there are many of us that don't share. You know, we were guarded, very guarded, and, and rightfully so because of things we have experienced. But we're moving into greater love in this season, people of God. So friends share personal things with each other. There has to be some exchange in friendship. And that's actually a part of laying down your life. You're giving room to openness. You're giving room to transparency. You're giving room to vulnerability. And we don't like to feel vulnerable. But we're giving room to all of that as we share. And if we give room to these things, it means that there is an invitation into deeper intimacy with the person. And there's an invitation into accountability. Amen. And I really sense that tonight's word is timely because a lot of what God is doing in our lives in this season involves, involves divine connections. There's a lot that you've been praying about, people of God, a lot that I've been seeking the face of the Lord about. It involves divine connections. So God is really preparing us. It involves divine collaborations. It involves divine partnerships. And even as I prepared this word tonight, Holy Spirit said to me, the most successful relationship is the one that consists of two dead people. I want you to hear me by the Spirit of the Lord tonight. Holy Spirit said to me so clearly as I prepared tonight's word, the most successful relationship is the one that consists of two dead people. Come on tonight. Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for a friend. I am dying for your benefit, for the benefit of the friendship or the relationship. I am putting aside my needs, my wants, my desires, my will, my opinions, my rights for the benefit of the friendship. There's a scripture that says that we are to esteem each other higher than ourselves, so this mentality of it's all about me and it's all about what I want is not kingdom. Come on. It's not kingdom. In the kingdom, we put other people first. And that is what God means when he says laying down your life for your friends, not physically dying and climbing up on a cross. He already did that. We don't have to physically die for each other. But we are dying for each other's benefit through surrendering our will and surrendering our desires. And if we die to ourselves for each other, then there is no limit to what God can accomplish through our greater love. And I want to challenge you guys. You know, I always say this, that a word from the preacher is first a word to the preacher. So the Lord has already been challenging me on this, even as I meditated on this scripture today. And he started speaking to me about things in my life concerning greater love. He is challenging us in this area, preparing us for greater love in every dimension of our lives because of what he's getting ready to do. We have been pressing into some stuff on the Midnight Cry prayer call. We've been calling forth the season changing. We've been pressing into the term that the Holy Spirit shared with us about replevin. We've been pressing in to miracles, signs, and wonders. And God is setting us up for everything that we have been pressing into in this season. Come on. And so greater love is needed as we move into, the, into uncharted territories with him. As we move into greater dimensions in him, he is setting us up. Yes, there is a repositioning and a realigning even in our love walk. Come on, people of God. So are you willing to die in your relationships? In which of your relationships are you still very much alive tonight? Both of you all are kicking. Oh, well, this is what I want. Well, this is what I want. Well, this is what I think. Well, this is what I think. How is that working for you in your relationships? In which relationship are you still very much alive? Where do you need to submit? Where do you need to die? Come on. God gets the most out of a life that is dead to itself. God gets the most. He says in Luke 9, 23, if anyone desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself. Come on, take up his cross and take up his cross daily. Come on and follow me. This is not Christianity 101 tonight. We're Christianity 707. Come on. This is for the mature and sober in the body of Christ. If we are going to, Walk in true greater love as Jesus commands us. We have to die to ourselves. So God gets most. He gets the most out of a life that is dead to itself. And truly the greatest sign of love is death. That's what Jesus did for us. Come on. He didn't stay up in heaven saying, oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. He, he showed us. 
and he showed us through dying on Calvary's cross. And so he says, you don't have to do that. Because if we all were dying for each other, there'd be no human beings left. But he is saying, even as I lay down my life for you, I want you to die to yourself in your relationships. I want you to serve each other in your relationships. I don't want it to be about you. I want it to be about the other person. If I'm putting you first and if I'm esteeming you higher than myself and if you're putting me first and if you're esteeming me higher than yourself, come on, that is greater love and the relationship will thrive and it will give God glory and it will give God honor. So the greatest sign of love tonight is death and we're going to press into that. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we give you glory for this word tonight. We thank you, God, for your just your loving kindness towards us and how you take the time to speak to us about the things that matter to you. We thank you for this sobering word tonight. You are concerned about our relationships with each other. You are concerned about how many God-ordained friendships, how many God-ordained relationships have been torn apart because no one was willing to die. You told us clearly in your word what you expect from us in our interpersonal relationships. You told us what you expect from us in our friendships. You modeled it for us when you walked the earth. And your love for us was so far beyond greater that you physically died in our place so that we might have everlasting life. And you want us, even as your children and your disciples, to have that same mindset of dying to ourselves and dying to our flesh. In the Garden of Gethsemane, you even had the option of giving in to your feelings. You had the option of choosing your own safety, of choosing your own comfort. But you said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. You died to yourself in that moment. Glory to God. Wow, I just received that revelation. You died a million deaths before you actually got to the cross. Glory to your name. You died a million deaths every step of the way you had to die to yourself. You had to die to your will. You had to die to your thoughts of what was going to happen up the road. You died a million deaths before you got to the cross. And so we pray tonight, God, that you will put a nevertheless in our hearts tonight. Stir it up in our spirits that regardless of what we feel in our flesh, there will be a nevertheless not my will but thine be done in our hearts tonight. Even as verse 14 of John 15 says that we are your friends if we do what you have commanded us to do. Give us a nevertheless in our hearts tonight, in our souls tonight, God. All over this call in the name of Jesus. We yield and we surrender to you, God. Release a fresh spirit of surrender on this call tonight. A fresh yieldedness on this call tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Forgive us, God, for even being alive in our relationships. Forgive us, God, for wanting to be right more than being in right relationship. Forgive us for our selfishness and our selfish ambition and our self-seeking behavior. Forgive us for the relationships that we have ruined because we were not willing to compromise or apologize or humble ourselves forgive us even in this moment for, re for our relationships that we have failed to even reconcile forgive us for selfishness God James chapter 3 verse 16 says for wherever there is jealousy and selfishness there is confusion and every evil work God have mercy on us tonight Wherever it is that we are alive and we are not surrendered or dead to self, there is an opportunity for selfishness to arise. And that can lead to confusion and every evil work as your word says. And I'm even hearing glory. I'm even hearing Holy Spirit say tonight that some of us need to apologize. If this word is for you, you need to receive it. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church tonight. I hear Holy Spirit saying tonight that some of us need to apologize. And there are people on Periscope confirming this. There are relationships that have been severed because we refuse to die to ourselves through an apology. Hear me tonight. When we are puffed up in pride, we don't want to apologize. But to apologize takes a lot of humility. And some of us need to go back and listen to that teaching um, about dying real quick. I don't even remember how, what I titled it as, but the quickest way to die. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The quickest way to die. We need to go back and listen to that teaching because Holy Spirit is even saying tonight that some of us need to apologize. There are relationships that we have refused 
to die to ourselves in and we need to handle that. I hear Holy Spirit saying in the spirit tonight, you need to handle that. So I ask you to deal with our hearts tonight, Holy Spirit. Root up every trace of pride, envy, every trace of jealousy, of covetousness, of bitterness, of resentment, anger, selfishness. Whatever you find in our hearts tonight that does not please you, we ask you to root it up and out tonight in the name of Jesus. Plow the soil of our hearts, God. Deal with us in the areas of openness, in the areas of vulnerability, in the areas of transparency. Deal with us in those areas, God. Many of us are so afraid of being open and honest with each other about how we truly feel. We're afraid of being open and transparent about what's on our hearts or our minds. We hide behind jokes or we hide behind lies. We're afraid of being exposed. But I even pray tonight in the name of Jesus for a baptism of divine openness. I pray tonight for a baptism of divine transparency. I pray tonight for a baptism of divine vulnerability to be released on this call in the name of Jesus. Many of us don't share because of fear or because of what happened the last time we feared or because we're afraid of feeling exposed. But Father, tonight in the name of Jesus, we ask you, God, to send trustworthy friends and connections in this season. People that we can be ourselves with. People that we can exhale with. People that our hearts can find safety with. I pray, God, that you will heal every wounded heart tonight from past offenses in the name of Jesus. Do a work even in our memory banks. In our memory banks, God. Wipe the slate of our amygdalas. Clean tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Some of us mentally regurgitate the offense so much that it has completely poisoned our minds. And we ask you for your help tonight, God. We cannot do this without you. We cannot love without you. You are love. So if we try to do it without you, we're getting lost at best. That's what it is. Anytime we try to love outside of Christ, we're getting lost at best. So help us tonight, God. We want to love with a greater love. We want to love each other as you have loved us. Teach us how to die to ourselves in our relationships. Teach us how to die to ourselves, God. We don't need to be butting heads with each other over things that don't matter in the grand scheme of things. We don't need to be butting our heads over things that God is in heaven saying that is not important to my kingdom. God help us in this season. And I even pray for a spirit of reconciliation. That has been my, that I've been a champion for reconciliation in the spirit for the past couple of months because the Lord has really been dealing with me about that. We need to reconcile in the body of Christ. The first ministry that we received was the ministry of reconciliation. It wasn't deacon. It wasn't minister. It wasn't pastor, prophet, apostle, teacher, evangelist. The first ministry we received when we received Christ was the ministry of reconciliation. God help us to get back to that ministry. We're too quick to cut people off. We're too quick to stop talking to each other. We're too quick to walk away from situations. I pray you stir up that ministry of reconciliation. I pray God that you stir that up God even in the spirit tonight in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Philippians 2 verse 3 says that we should let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit but in lowliness and humility of mind, let each of us esteem the other as better than himself. There is no I am better than you in the kingdom. God, we even bind that spirit in the name of Jesus that has us feeling like we're better than other people. That has us looking down at groups and other people because of ways that they don't compare to us or ways that we feel we're higher than them. That is not kingdom. And we repent tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Help us. Help us in this area. You are challenging us in so many areas in this season, including our love walk. Thank you, Holy Spirit. They will know that we are Christians, not by how much we speak in tongues. God help us tonight. Not by our spiritual gifts of prophecy and word of knowledge and word of wisdom. Not by how many people that we're able to lay hands on and Holy Spirit heals them through us. Not by any of those things. But they will know that we are Christians by our love, God. Help us in our love walk in this season. Circumcise our hearts tonight in Jesus' name. Circumcise our motives. 
circumcise our minds circumcise our desires circumcise our passions god circumcise us in this season make us acceptable to you conform us to your image to your likeness anybody that knows me and knows my parents know that those are my parents they know that i'm their child because i look like them we look like our parents and god is calling us to look like him we ought to look like him god help us tonight the greatest sign of love is death so teach us how to die Teach us how to die to ourselves, even in our relationships, God. We just repent. We ask you to have mercy on us for the ways that we have done love wrong. We ask you to have mercy on us for the ways that we have done relationships wrong. And we just ask you, God, to help us and to teach us. Holy Spirit, you promise to teach us and to lead us and to guide us into all truth. Release your truth even through this word tonight, God, and stir it up in our hearts. So, Father, we just give you the glory tonight. I cover every person under the sound of my voice, under your blood tonight. I thank you because I really sense that you are stirring up hearts on the call tonight, that you are even convicting us in areas that we need to change. And I sense, thank you, Holy Spirit, I sense that God is even bringing people to your minds, people of God. As you are hearing this word tonight, God is bringing people to your minds that you need to reach out to, that you need to apologize to, that you need to reconcile with. And hear me, the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew exactly what we need to do when there is an offense in a relationship exactly what we need to do and once you have followed all of those steps that you surrender the matter to God at the end of the day it's about your relationship with God it's not about the other person it's really about your relationship with God so father we just commit ourselves to you afresh we resubmit we recommit we rededicate and we surrender resurrender ourselves to you and we ask you God to teach us how to love to operate through us, to help us in our love walk, in our relationships, in our friendships, in all of our connections, because you are sending divine connections in this season. You're sending divine collaborations. You're sending divine partnerships. And we don't want to chase them off or to cause disrepair because we don't know how to operate in love, in greater love. So, Father, continue to help us tonight. I cover every person under the sound of my voice, under your blood. I pray a blood wall of protection round about them, round about their families, God. Every household represented on this call tonight, I cover them under your blood in the name of Jesus. And I ask you, God, to continue to lead us and guide us, to convict us in the areas that we need to be convicted. You chasten those you love. So we thank you tonight for loving us enough to send this word to reposition and to realign us in our love walk with you. So God bless us tonight. Have your way in our lives. We thank you for reconciliation. We thank you for restoration. We thank you for everything that's going to come out of this call. We just call forth a great harvest from the seed that has been planted on tonight's call in the name of Jesus. And we speak crop failure. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We speak crop failure to every negative seed that we unintentionally planted in our relationships in the name of Jesus. We speak crop failure that they will not grow, that they will not yield a harvest, that they will not produce we pray god that you deal with every fox that has been let loose in the vine of our hearts the fox of pride the fox of offense the fox of jealousy we pray god that you kill every fox tonight in the name of jesus and secure the garden of our hearts god secure the breaches in our hearts tonight in the name of jesus so father we love you we give you the glory. We give you the honor and the praise. It is in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I believe somebody asked me what chapter from Matthew. I believe it's Matthew chapter 18 that walks us through how to reconcile and how to deal with offense in relationships. I love you guys so much much it is my honor and my privilege to pray with you we've been doing this for four years we have come together over 400 times and i give god all the glory 
I just pray for you as I ask you to pray for me and to keep the midnight cry prayer call lifted in prayer by the grace of God. We'll be back on the prayer call again on Thursday at midnight Eastern Standard Time, 11 p.m. Central Standard Time. Love you guys. God bless you.